My name is Phil Memling, I'm the Vice President of Advancement for Hodges University, and it's my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you here this morning for a long anticipated occasion. Uh, I believe we have Council Councilman Johnny Streets in the audience. Is he here? Okay. Uh, everyone in this audience is distinguished, but I'm I'm compelled to always introduce elected officials. Uh, again, good morning, and uh, I just wanted to uh, make a couple of comments. Number one, the faculty, staff, students of Hodges University are blessed to have two magnificent campuses in Fort Myers and in Naples. Uh, this building U uh, is a state-of-the-art facility. It was completed about three years ago. Uh, it's LEED certified, and one of the things that we are so proud of is the opportunity to uh, plan with this facility, not only a congregate area for our, our students, but also an area for them to socialize. And truly, this is the jewel of our campus complex facility. So uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, with the construction of this building, it also allowed us to free up about 5,000 square foot of space in our first building, which is immediately adjacent, to put in a state-of-the-art uh, resource center and this is not like a library you probably ever seen before because it is devoid of books it's uh, almost 98 percent digital uh, providing our students and our faculty uh, with an opportunity to learn in a, an environment that is truly 21st century uh, the other thing that we're very blessed to have at Hodges University is a core of donors and community leaders that are passionate about our mission uh, for providing career opportunities for our students, and they recognize that our responsibility is to help them achieve life success and to fuel the workforce engine of Southwest Florida. So uh, this is a momentous day in the history of our university. Uh, we're young, only 25 or so years old, actually we'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary year starting in January, uh, but at the same token, we believe we're a great institution with a great future. And with that in mind, I'd like to introduce our great leader, the president of Hodges University, Dr. Jeanette Brock. Thank you, Phil. Hodges University has established naming opportunities to provide recognition for those in the community who support our mission and our students. When deciding possible candidates for the naming of the student union, I immediately thought of Lee Pitts. Lee has been associated with Hodges University since 1993. He has hosted several of the university's diversity festivals and received the Hodges University Excellence in Diversity Award in 2009. He supports other university events by having Hodges guests appear on the Lee Pitts Live Show. This show has received five NAACP Image Awards and the Southwest Florida's People Choice Award. It is the first and only TV talk show in Southwest Florida, hosted by an African American. Hodges University has a diverse student population. 42% of our students are Hispanic, and 14% are African American. Lee is a positive role model for all students who face the challenges of finding their way in life, balancing family, job, and school responsibility. He is a testimonial where one begins in life does not have to be dictated where one ends up. His life path demonstrates that he understood early on the importance of obtaining an education, receiving both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. You can read about his many other accomplishments on the dedication program provided for this event. So here we are today in this beautiful student union dedicating it to Lee Pitts the first African American to be honored with a naming opportunity at Hodges University. As president, I am both pleased and proud that Lee has accepted this honor and his name will forever be part of Hodges University.
likes to speak a lot. <laughs> Fraternity, 
We also have uh, Zeta Phi Beta is here. We have a lot of Greek letter organizations that came out to support me. I can't call everybody's name. I know you know me personally, but uh, I, I see you, I hear you, I've heard your applause, and I want you to know that it did not fall on deaf ears, okay? Uh, but uh, Dr. Chapman, uh, right there with the pink hat on, uh, she is my role model. She's a She's an icon. She's the only person that I've ever called an icon on my television show. And she got out and she said she wouldn't miss this for the world. So Dr. Chapman, thanks for coming out. Uh, former educator. And then there's Willie Battle. Willie Battle, a longtime civil rights activist, a good friend of mine. And many of the NAACP Image Awards that I've gotten in the past were because Willie Battle submitted my name. Willie Battle, she's standing up in the piece. Just short on Willie Battle. Willie Battle has always told me, he pulled me to the side early on when I arrived in Fort Myers and told me that I was a civil rights activist in my own way. And that was the highest compliment you could have told me, Willie. Thanks a lot. Also, we have here my good friend Abdul Haq Muhammad from the Quality Life Center. They're doing an outstanding job with the youth over there. And they have an event coming up on November the 14th that I'll be a part of. Congratulations to Quality Life Center. We uh, have uh, Dr. Peter Denui. He's the uh, president of the African Network of Southwest Florida that has always been a good friend of Lee Pitt's Live. Congratulations, Dr. Denui, Peter Denui. Uh, when when uh, someone is naming, building out you, you have to get into it. I mean, you can't just be la -de -da -de -da -de -da. I had so many people kept calling me, Lee, you realize this is a big deal? Lee, you realize this is a big deal. Okay, so then I uh, sent an invitation to, to Reverend Jones, who's a busy man. He's got a church to run. He had a meeting in Orlando. He emailed me back. I got a meeting in Orlando. I'm changing everything. I'm coming there. I'm going to be there. So I see Pastor Jones right there. He made it. Changed his meeting from Orlando to come here. <laughs> then the Black History Society, Nina, Nina. This, they are documenting everything for their museum. Uh, and we'll get a chance to talk to them some more, Dr. Brock. Uh, Black History Society has a wonderful museum in Dunbar. And now I've done something to actually make it into a museum. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> if people know me, I'm not going to try to make this too heavy. It's not going to be you know, the State of the Union or anything. This is pretty much how I go about life. But uh, I have a friend, a longtime friend, met him in my banking days and started mentoring him and we became such good friends. He's like my little brother. I'm the godfather to his son who's uh, doing very well. And he flew in all the way from Atlanta, successful businessman. I want you to stand up and let everybody see because I taught him how to dress. Every day. Every day. Hey, check out how he's dressed. Check out how he's dressed. Come around and everybody see. when he first got his first banking job. He was coming in there dressing the wrong way for a brother. Now he's a successful businessman. Uh, another, another big part of mine many years was uh, the Memorial Health System. And uh, Jim Nathan emailed me and told me he had a press conference to deal with today. But my Lee Memorial Health System family is here and represented represented well by Yamasi Oloruntola Goats. And up, Yamasi. She's over diversity here. And speaking of diversity, Hodges University has a fabulous uh, diversity department headed up by the diversity chief. And I know she's behind the scenes, willing and dealing. She's a good friend of mine. We text each other every week. Gail Williams. Gail Hodges. Also, Southern Christian Leadership Conference is represented well in here. The president is here. I already recognize the chairman, which is Willie Battle. And I see Lee Ford is here from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Thanks for coming out, Lee Ford, the president. <laughs> now, the, um, Phil, who was up here early on, Phil, he has been behind the scenes making all this wonderful event come to reality. Phil was a part of the meeting that I had with Dr. Brock. And I've known Phil for a long time, but to see him in that meeting and, and to see the passion behind 
him and Dr. Brock basically saying, hey, will you let us name this student? I mean, come on. Yeah, you can name it. <laughs> and uh, so, Phil, I want to uh, recognize you again, Phil, right there. Great. And Adrian, Adrian, I see you back there, Adrian. I know you worked hard organizing all this, emailing me. I want you to get your proper due. That's her in the hall. Raise your hand, Adriana. She's the assistant to the president. All right. Get away. Uh, uh, I, I think I pretty much got the whole boat. Oh, we have an Olympian in here. Gold medalist, world record holder. Bob Beeman, the Olympian. Good friend of mine now. There's Bob Beeman, the Olympian, world record holder. In Munich. That was Munich, right? Munich. The long jump in Munich. You guys remember him? You can Google him. That's an American treasure right here in Hodges. Now, I know this is probably in this particular room right here. This probably the largest amount of African Americans and minorities been in this room at one time. <laughs> okay, and that's a good thing because I want you all to know about Hodges and get a chance to come over here and tour Hodges because when my good friend Joe Turner, who's the Director of Public Relations, Joe Turner, right there with the camera. He brought me in here about a year and a half ago, gave me a tour. I was over here to interview Dr. Brock and, and some other people. And we were sitting right here. I was doing the interview, not in my wildest dreams, thinking one day this building will be named uh, this, this. I was thinking it's a really nice room. <laughs> and, and so I want to recognize Joe Turner, too. <laughs> now, let's go back a bit and go forward and I'll keep it brief, and then I'll take a few questions. The um, Hodges, how did it all come about? Why am I standing up here in the first place? Quiet things happen without a lot of people knowing about it. And some of you may have heard me say that everything is black and white. Everything is black and white. But sometimes we make them great because we don't want to make decisions. So we create a gray area. And in that gray area, a lot of things get lost in the gray. But real leadership makes decisions. And so you have black and white. Black versus white. You make the decisions and you move forward. So Hodges University made a decision that actually impacted me long before standing up here, long before I even knew that good things would happen to me later. Before I go any further, I want to recognize my mentor, Roy Kennix, Frank Kennedy. Raise your hand. I don't want to miss you. That's right. No big hurry. Okay, so here's how um, black and white plays out. So early on, before Leap is Live was all that it is today, I was a young banker in the area. Hey, the mayor is here, Mayor Humphrey. Good to see you, Mayor. <laughs> good to see you. I've interviewed Jim Humphrey many times. Just want y'all to know I know the mayor. <laughs> I see you calling him Mayor Humphrey. Um, and I see Mike Jeffrey from Grenada. I'm an honorary Grenadian. That's Mike Jeffrey. My wife is from Grenada and my mother-in-law is from Grenada. Now, the black and white. So I, uh, I interviewed somebody from Hodges University early on in my first couple of years on the air. One of the things about being on television, and I can't help but talk about television in this sense because that's what brought Hodges and myself together. They said to me, I interviewed a student, and I was impressed with the student. And afterwards, we small talk, and she said, you know, you ought to have a conversation with international college. That is what it was called back in the early 90s. And I, and I told him, hey, I need to get sponsors and advertising people to make the show become a reality. This was pioneering. There was never a show on television hosted by a person who looked like me. I hear those types of things. So I, I was having difficulty, believe it or not, I was having difficulty at the time getting Lee Pitts Live launched. Oh, yeah, we sit there and watch it on Sunday mornings now and enjoy it. But there's always a beginning, and that's where you find your real friends, and that's where black and white and no gray comes into play. So I grabbed my briefcase, I went down to Naples, Florida, and they had a shopping center that they had retrofitted to be a college. It was International College. It wasn't fancy Hodges as it is today. It was a 
the shopping center. They were on their way up. They were maybe three years old themselves. So I went in and I met with the president, Dr. McMahon. He met me at the door. He shook my hand. I came in. We had a real brief conversation. And he said, hey, International College wants to be a part of Lee Pitt's life. What do we need to do? I laid out what he needed to do. And since that time, since like 1993, International College, now Hodges University, has been a close partner with Lee Pitts Live. And after they signed on to be a sponsor, other corporations followed. They did not see great. They made a decision. So that is why I have a deep affection for Hodges University. And that is one of the main reasons you hear me on television all the time, not blinking, talking about how great Hodges University is. So I'm not making this up for PR purposes. I remember sitting in there at International College then, embraced Lee Pitts Live, and then they have been with me ever since. It's a great partnership. So let's give them another hand. <laughs> now, generally, generally in partnership, people don't end up naming facilities after me. So they went above and beyond in the partnership, Dr. Brock called me into her office about five months ago. I had to keep my mouth. I told my wife about it. She, my wife doesn't really get excited about things. <laughs> this is the only thing she kept saying, oh, this is big. <laughs> this is big. <laughs> I said, you're scaring me to death. <laughs> this morning, this is big. <laughs> the reason she doesn't get that excited is because for obvious reasons I've received a lot of things over the years. But, this is uh, like like the biggest. This is this is it. And um, so Dr. Brock calls me. Even when we meet her in the field, and I go into. I was kind of like, you know what's going on? They take me to the conference room. Yeah, nice layout of food. You know, when people have layouts of food, something's up. <laughs> it could be good. It could be bad. You never know when they feed you, Muhammad. <laughs>
Oh, that's Lee Pitts, the smart guy in the class. My mom would look at me and say, why are they calling you the smart guy? <laughs> it was just, they had labeled me that. This is the first time I ever said it in public. I don't, I'm not trying to say I'm smart. This is just the way it was. Anyway, so when I arrived in college, a couple of administrators in college asked me, was I related to Pitts at Miles College? I said, no. They asked me all the time. I didn't know why. So somewhere along the way, years later, a friend of mine told me, you know they have a dormitory at Miles College called L.H. Pitts. The dormitory is up in big letters, L.H. Pitts on the college campus. My, middle, my, my initials are L.H. Pitts. Lee Herm Pitts. So they said, if you had gone to Miles College, people would think you were related to the, the guy they named their dormitory out. Well, that would have been cool. That would be pretty cool. I would have lied and said it, you know, please. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the cool part. So when Brandon, my son right here, and my wife, we went home to visit my dad. My dad's name is Lee Pitts, so we decided to go up. To, I said, let's go up to Miles College and see this building that has my name on, our name on. I thought my dad would get a kick out of it. He's in his 80s. So we went up, remember Michelle? We went up with our camera, and we stood in front of the building. L. A. Pitts took pictures, and I had planned on maybe one day telling a tall tale that he L. A. Pitts is building his name after me. So now, I don't have to do that. <laughs>
in college. So it took a lot of time and it was sort of embarrassing. But you can improve your life if you get the right people like Dr. Chapman and all these great educators to help you improve your life, Jerry Webb. So after improving Roy on my grammar, then I went into natural science 101. A lot of math, so mathematics, algebra, calculus, and so on. I wasn't really astute in that. And so what I did was I figured out a way to graduate. And this is my message on figuring things out. So Dr. Chu was no nonsense professor. And he told me, he said, Lee Pitts, about his class. He said, if you're not here after what you're supposed to be here after, you're going to be here after you're supposed to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dead serious. He was going to pluck me. And I don't know what would have become of my life, Mike. I know some people want to write that down. Let's slow it down. <laughs> if you're not here after, Everybody repeat after me. If you're not here after what you're supposed to be here after, you're going to be here after you're supposed to be gone. <laughs> Tell your students that. Wake them up. <laughs> I know I never told you stories. Anyway, so I'm in Dr. Shoes class, wrapping this up. And uh, I noticed these girls sitting on the side of me. Angela Alderman on my left, Sandra Schemberg on my right. Down the seat. And they were just writing these notes down, and Dr. Chu was writing all those quadratic equations on the board. I was looking over there, I was looking over there, I they understand this stuff. And I was like, it was close to final exam, and I think I had maybe a C minus grade in that, in that natural science class. And I needed to pull that up at least to a B to graduate, you know, to get out of there, maybe a C plus if I'm lucky, but if I fail this final exam, I get an F. And that just throws everything out of whack. I need to graduate on time. We don't have this kind of money. You know, my mom is sending me food stamps to school from time to time. This is real. I'm just telling it like it really is. So I need to get up out of here. I can't be in college for five years. It's the money is not there. So, um, long story short, I didn't figure out how I could get these two smart girls to study with me. I would see them raising their hand and answering questions in class. I knew they were smart and they had A's, but why would they want to study with those C minus Lee Pitts? So here's what I did to make my life better off. I got with Sandra, I saw her at the library one day. I said, hey Sandra, Angela and I are going to get together tonight to study with you. <laughs> I told Sandra, I said, hey, Angela and I are going to get together tonight to study for an exam. Would you like to join us? She said, sure, because she knew Angela was smart. They, they could do their little exchange of notes and, you know. So then I got with Sandra, I, Angela, I saw her at the end, which is similar to the student union. We call it the end in college. I said, hey, so that was, that was Angela I got with first, right? <laughs> Sandra. I get your lives straight. <laughs> hey, check this out. So then I got with Angela. I said, hey, me and Sandra are going to the library this evening to study for the exam. Would you like to join us? And she said, of course, yes, because she knew the other one was smart. I just said the other one came up with I told this story when I spoke at my high school commencement years ago, and my mom hated it. But I'm telling you. Anyway. So I got the two smart girls together. Here's the point. I got two smart people together, and I sat in the middle of them when we went to study. They start exchanging information about what they thought was going to be on the exam. They start updating their test scores, making sure each person had the right answer on the past test. You know, I got this answer wrong. Did you get it right? Yes, that answer should have been, you know, Einstein's theory or relativity or something. Okay, so then I'm just writing down notes. I'm just getting in the middle of this action. I'm trying to improve my lot in life. I couldn't contribute to the discussion. <laughs> You know, I'm acting like I was, you know, acting like, you know, I know something. Hey, I'm acting like, why are they talking? Yeah, yeah. 
I'll update my notes. I know you're an educator, Olivia. This is a true story. I wouldn't be here today. I was updating my notes. And one of the things I noticed is that because they were they had come from very good high schools, that they had everything written down. The Dr. Chalk, Dr. Chu cough, they had cooks written in their notes. <laughs> and these girls got some good notes. So I hung in there, I, I got my notes updated, I studied hard, and then I Got a B out of the class, Roy. I got, I got an A minus on the test. The girls got A pluses, of course. Got my A minus. I raised my uh, grade point, my grade in that class to a B. And from that point on, I started trying to figure out how to get things done. I know I told the field. The girls, they are friends of mine now. They're doctors and all of that. And they always tell people, when I tell them, you know, I told that field, they say, oh, Lee, we're so proud of you. We're happy for you. And that's, that's the way it turned out. So I tell that to everybody that a lot of times when you see people, you don't really know where they came from. I thought I'd just unveil a little bit of what's behind me. And I think Hodges has a real good idea of where I come from. And that is why I'm always trying to help the next person. Sometimes I have to be hardcore business about it, but I'm always trying to help the next person. And that is why this is so important to me, Dr. Brock. And that is why this is uh, something that helps me in the future. Let me show you how this helps me in the future. Whenever I go somewhere and people introduce me, particularly when I'm talking to colleges and students, they won't normally pay attention. But when people introduce me, they read my bio, then the students start listening. They'll sit up and they'll listen because they think you're somebody. So if they think you're somebody and they'll listen to you, then you can inspire some information to them that may help them. So now they'll be able to say, and he also, the student union building at Hodges University was named after Lee Pitt's Hodges, Lee Pitt Student Union, and then they'll listen to me, and then I can trick them with some knowledge. So <laughs> thanks for letting me <laughs> Now, at this time, I'm going to say what the way I always close, and then I'm going to take a few questions, and we'll move from there. Uh, great educator at Morehouse talked about time management. I read it somewhere when I was young, and it went something like this. You only have a minute with only 60 seconds in. It's thrust upon you. You didn't seek it, nor did you choose it, but it's up to you to use it. A tiny little minute with your life locked in. And that's the way I try to govern myself, try to manage my time, and try to do multiple things, from teaching swimming to the banking career to the television show and all the things that go on behind it, is to try to manage that time. And luckily, I have a wife that allows me to do all these things. So I want to, again, show my appreciation to Hodges University. This is the highest honor you could pay to me. And I hope that other people will aspire to do good in their lives and know that if you work hard at things, if you try to do the right thing, down the road, don't necessarily happen immediately. I know I'm pretty young to have a building, you know, with my name on it. Made me feel kind of old. <laughs> but things happen. I see you back there, Dr. Sheriff, a good friend of mine in Melissa. Don't think, I want to make sure I recognize you. Good friend of mine. Okay, and I see you, Nadere, back there, okay, from the Children's Network of Southwest Florida, good partners of mine. So at this time, I'm going to act presidential, and I'm going to open the floor <laughs> for a few questions uh, related to today. Just, just raise your hand, I'll point you out just like the president. <laughs> okay, right there, the young lady in the, in the red is Jack. <laughs> So my question to you, what impact specifically to younger African American males would this have with them being you and make such a major accomplishment? Thank you. I think that's a great question. Young African American male. I, I don't think that we can ever put enough positive images in front of young African American males, particularly those who are less fortunate, like, like I was. The more positive images that we put in front of them, just like with 100 black men, what they see is what they'll become. 
the more positive it'll be, it can be. But I think even more important to your question is the fact that I didn't like being known as being smart. I did. Jerry Ware, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of us young inner city kids, it's not celebrated to be smart. So if I, not saying that I'm smart, but if they see me as the smart guy, then they can see something positive in the smart guy. So I grew up be a kid from the ghettos who people saw as a smart guy, and I hope that others will see me that way as well. Thank you. I see you over there, Tony, Zeta Phi Beta. Thanks for coming out. I'm just doing some things in passing. See you, Bob Nottens, Kaiser University. Kaiser let you come out to this? <laughs> Kaiser's going to name their next building. <laughs> Next question, Dr. Denui. Yes, sir. thank you. By the way, let me start by congratulating you and this great service. It, uh, I know it's a big honor. Many of us from Africa, you know, you get, I have an accent. I've <laughs> <laughs> been honored a great deal by Lee Peaks. I want to say this because he's helped us assimilate. Assimilate with the other African Americans and other communities in this region. And we thank you for it and you deserve this honor. You are the winner of the award. By and by, as we have uh, talked with you, we've known Lee Beats as the first vice president banker. Lee Beats, first media learning TV show. Lee Beats this, Lee Beats that. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor. How do you get to it? How does it make you feel? All these fast, fast, fast. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I want to get there. The spotlight. When I uh, arrived into the spotlight, I never planned to be in the spotlight. It happened for a reason. Uh, when I was a child, I was in the spotlight. I was the lead actor in the school plays. The teachers were always giving me the lead roles. I wasn't trying to get the lead roles. I don't even know it's the lead role. And then in high school, when they, uh, when they elected me as the president of the student government, it really thrusted me into the spotlight. So I got used to it. And then I started remembering something Charles Daly always says, much, much is given, much is required, and I start trying to implement some of those things. But I think that uh, you guys might be surprised to know, if you talk to my college roommate, he'll tell you that I wasn't that talkative in school, and the main reason I wasn't that talkative was because I wasn't, it was about the grammar. I didn't want those fancy college students to know I couldn't speak grammar that well. I fixed that, I, obviously, I don't have any notes right now. So, being in the spotlight carries a lot of responsibility, and um, I just hope that I can be a positive influence. Thanks for that question. Mr. Muhammad. This is not a question, just an acknowledgement of appreciation to you. Many people may not be aware, we could was a part of Quality Life Center of Southwest Florida in the most earliest days. Not only was he on our board, he also was our swim instructor. He had something called the QLC. Seals. Seals. 1994 or something. 300 children. Right. Many of them never learned to swim prior to your efforts. And when you entered them into competition, Many of them won first place, and many of those children are off in college, in professions, all over this country. Roy Kinnick remembers those days, as many of you. We were not connected with corporate America here in Southwest Florida until you made the connection with banking. I can remember one of our first checks coming to Quality Life Center for approximately $3,000. We thought we were rich. That's right. It had to do with your contacts. Matter of fact, as quiet as it's kept, I'd ask Lee Pitts 
to become the executive director of Quality Life Center because I felt he would be more user friendly to the population <coughs> than I would. So I just want to say to you, brother, um, Lee Pitts, as all of us know, is able to self-promote himself very effectively. <laughs> for that, I would always inform the public that Lee Pitts makes efforts to give back to the community while he does so, and you have advanced QLC in the early days, and still you are in alignment, and we expect you to be a trustee of Quality Life Center for eternity. May Thank God you. bless you, and congratulations. I do have a question, but before I ask the question, I want to make two two comments. Go ahead. Um, one is congratulations. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Hodge is on, is on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. I just want to say you're on the right side of history because of the difference you made in a lot of people's lives. Okay. Number two, I want to say thank you. Um, I met Lee, gosh, as my son would say, he was a sophomore in college uh, back in 1990. <laughs> I was just out of college, and uh, we, we started working at the bank together. Uh, and you notice, you know, sometimes in your in your journey, in your life, you, you somebody sees something in you that you don't even know you have. So he was that guy that saw something in me. In fact, you mentioned that uh, we had something in common. We were both from single parent homes, from the projects. But one difference was you had brothers and sisters. All I had was three sisters. So you truly are. The brother I never had. I don't say thanks for that. Uh, the last comment I'll make is I think uh, I was on the right side of history. Um, back in 1990, when we were at the bank in Tampa, Lee used to you know, come up with these ideas that I'd never heard a young brother talk about. Like he would quote, you know, if I worked Roger Kitten. Mm -hmm. We walked through the courtyard, he'd say, Gaines, what if? I wasn't in banking, but I could do something to touch a lot of people's lives. He said, what if I did a swim video? And I remember the day you came to work with that script, written, right. handwritten on, on some, even half my cool. paper. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so I want to say I, I was good to be a part of that and watch you, watch right. you grow from that. He was there from the beginning. The beginning yeah. Stuff. yeah. Um, and then the last thing, my question is, uh, so our journeys met in 1990 <laughs> at the bank. We see you know, what you've become now. My question is, when you were that eight, nine, ten-year-old brother in Birmingham in the projects, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? That's a really good question. Um, I thought that I would be, it was one of two things. I was going to be a lifeguard, because I had these swim skills and I was a competitive swimmer. That would be my career. I would be a lifeguard and then think about college and all of that. The other thing I thought about I would be was an operator. Let me tell you why I thought I would be an operator. Remember when you could call 411? Yeah. And you could hear the operator turning pages uh, on the phone. You could hear them turning pages. You ask for a name, they flip the phone book. I figured, man, that's a pretty easy job. You're sitting there. And you're <laughs> so I wanted that good job just sitting down turning pages. So that was it. That was it. The far as I could think on that. But let me add one other thing to that. Uh, as it relates to goals in the household, my mother nor my father finished high school. So their goal was for all of us to finish high school because they hadn't finished high school. If uh, we could go beyond what they had accomplished, Frankie, then they would be proud. And generally, people who are setting your goals for you, their goals are pretty much limited to what they can see. So then when I arrived on a college campus, like a great institution like Hodges, then I started to raise my goals higher and then on to graduate school. So I was not a person who was under a lot of pressure as a child, and I'm glad I wasn't, to go to college 
make my parents happy and do things to make them happy. So my going to college and those types of things were because I wanted to do it. And so that is why I was able to make it through because I wasn't there. And that's a uh, word of advice to some of the parents. No, let it be, you know, should your kids really want to want to pursue higher education and they'll stick it out. So, y'all have a seat. I, have, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Oh, don't do me like Muhammad did. <laughs>
went for the fight in the community. And these names, remember, even before my time, did I call my name? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even before my time, uh, we had people who did this for us. Uh, so we need the people here that came here and need to learn about our community and how to get here to get a job because it was impossible up to 1990. 1960, it was very bad, 60. We didn't, couldn't even come across the railroad track. Uh, we had to stay in that little community there. Uh, segregation school, uh, fight for integration, dog bites. The same thing happened what you see on the national right here in Lee County but the people don't know that. They should learn the history of that, uh, our community. And you made it worthwhile for the fight that I used me. My wife got fired to fight for civil rights. I went bankrupt to fight for civil rights. I got hit in the head with KKK fight for civil rights. I got all these stars right here for fire that people don't know about. They think it just was easy just to come in four miles. I just got a job here. Uh, even to bring up the markets here, it was like it. So we never got what to do to handle what Mr. Mark was doing. And uh, I appreciate the day and I appreciate Hodges for taking the step, for reverse, <coughs> taking the step to uh, give you the opportunity. And I want to thank you and put that in your little, you already know it, but I'm talking to other people, the people that got us to be able to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Will. For Lee Clausen, I just wanted to make one comment, and that is, uh, it's not occasion without mentioning Veronica Shoemaker's name. Uh, she was our first ever luminary of the year, I think five years ago. We cherish her, we wish her well, I hear her, but she has some health issues, but uh, uh, please let her know we think of her often. And Willie, what are we planning the next cruise? Willie and I were on a carnival cruise together six months ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, that's right, let's don't forget Veronica Schumann. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Charlie, did I recognize you? I know I said something to Olivia. I want to recognize my, my uh, stepfather, Charlie Saunders, right there. Raise your hand, Charlie.
he was going the wrong direction early on in life. I saw him, I saw him get arrested. Um, saw him in the back seat of the police car. He was around uh, 11. Back there, him and his buddy got caught stealing, and they had the um, handcuffs on their ankles. So my mom brought us out to the car. We looked in. I know my brother's successful now. He's a CPA, successful businessman. After that, they took him to juvenile court and this and that. He was about two years younger than me. I saw him in the back seat. My mom said, make sure this doesn't happen to you. My brother, after he got out of juvenile court, Ed, he turned his life around, which was the best thing that could have happened to me because I started following my brother just like little kids follow their brothers. My brother did good things. He became an honor student. He went on to the University of Alabama, became a CPA. He's a successful businessman now. So that was my primary role model. And my mom was one of my primary role models because I saw her get up, go to work every day to try to make ends meet, ends meet for the family. No, no other fancy big name person was my role model. <clears throat> so, everybody, please stand. We're we'll closing. Uh, uh, I think you're coming back, Phil. But I like, I like to close things like. I like to do that. Jesse Jackson kind of thing. Everybody just repeat after me. I believe, I believe in the principles, in the principles of, higher education. of higher education. I believe, I believe that I can achieve, I can achieve despite the odds. Despite the odds. I, believe, I believe that I should be a credit. That I should be a credit to my family, to my, family my, community, my community, and my country. And my country. I, believe I believe I should safeguard, I should safeguard my, reputation my reputation with the best, with the best in conduct, in conduct achievement, achievement, and celebration of others. And celebration of others. These, things These things constitute, constitute the true value, the true value of, a decent, of a decent human being. Human being. Thank you. Thank you.